One more problem will work together. It looks like it's number 19 appearing in your sampling questions. Um, number 19, we're given the following data information. Vapor pressure P of a liquid has measured at two different temperatures. We have a Kelvin temperature, we'll call this uh, T1, and this will be T2. Here's P1 in a kilopascal and T2, so just trial one, trial two. We're going to graphically determine the enthalpy of heat of vaporization. What points would you use? So understanding a little bit about the graph um, associated with our equation, we know that the natural log of the pressure set up on a y-axis versus the reciprocal of the Kelvin temperature set up on the x-axis creates a straight line that has a negative slope. And that negative slope can be used to determine the heat of vaporization by taking the negative delta H vape over R, where R is our gas constant, 8.31 joules per Kelvin mole. Notice that we're being asked in a joule, so the heat of vaporization <clears throat> should come out in a joule, so we'll leave this right at 8.31. We have a little graphing to do to simply find the slope of the line, and plug that slope in to solve for delta H of vaporization. So knowing that the x-axis on our graph, just to repeat, are the reciprocal temperatures. So what we need to do to find the first point on the x is to take the reciprocal of your T1, 1.3, I'm sorry, 1 over 325. And you actually have to solve that to punch it into your sapling. So, oops, turn your calculator on. 1 divided by your first temperature, 1 over 325. And that's giving me a value of 0 0.003076, so I'll just round 0 0.0031. Do that same thing for point 2 on the x-axis. So here mine would be 1 over 775, our second temperature. Reciprocal of T2 gives me a value of 0.00129, so I'll write that in as 0.0013. How about the y? Well, remember on the graph, the y is the natural log of p. So here what we need to do is to go back and try to scroll up. Take the natural log of the first pressure, 3.63, and hit for the natural log of 6.09. So on your calculator, find ln, not log, but ln, that's a natural log 3.63, and here I'm finding 1.289. And I'll do the same natural log of 6.09. How about 1.806, so 1.81. Alrighty. So we've managed to find the two points on the line. To find the rise, we know that it's the change in y. So just thinking about your graph, this would be called the rise, and this is called the run, so the delta y. We want to find the difference between the two points on the y-axis. So 1.81 minus 1.29. 1.81 minus 1.29 gives me a delta y of 0.52. Same idea here, the change in x is the difference between x2 and x1. So for me, it would be 0 0.0013 minus 0 0.0031, x2 minus x1. And here I'm getting a negative 0 0.0018. And that's correct. Remember, this is a negative slope. So the slope is the change in y over the change in x. Change in y we found to be 0.52. The change in x was negative 0 0.0018. Solve for that, and we'll find the slope of the line. 0018. And this looks like negative 288.88. .88. Oh, 
Alrighty, now we have the information to come down and actually solve for the heat of vaporization using the slope of the line. So the slope we found, negative 288.89, that's going to be set equal to negative, our target variable, variable heat of vaporization, over R, the gas constant 8.31, and that's a joule per mole Kelvin. So I'm going to cross multiply. So negative 288.89 times 8.31. Excuse me. And when I solve for that, just cross multiplying, negative delta H of vaporization came out to be, oops, hit equal, negative 2400.67. So of course we divide both sides by negative one, and our heat of vaporization comes out as a positive value. That's in a joule per mole, and that's what exactly what we were asked to report it in. About 2400 joules per mole is the heat of vaporization solved for in that problem.